Hey everyone, it's Lara from the blog ArtReallyHouse.com and today I want to share with you my favorite homemade all-natural shampoo. Plus I'm going to answer some frequently asked questions about making your own shampoo and transitioning to homemade natural shampoo. One of the first videos that I ever shared on YouTube was my homemade shampoo recipe and it's still one of my favorites. Now since then I've also shared a coconut rosemary shampoo, I've also shared shampoo bars and a whole bunch of just natural hair care products from hairsprays to serums to conditioners and I will link all of that down in the description box below. But today I'm going to really just talk about my first shampoo recipe that I ever shared. I'm going to share it again just because it's really only three ingredients, super simple to make. But mainly I want to answer some questions because since posting this video maybe about two years ago, it's had a lot of views and it's had a lot of comments and questions. It's on my blog, it's on Pinterest. And between all of those, I kind of put together some of the most asked questions and I thought I would go over them with you because sometimes it's easier to answer these things through video form rather than sending out tons of messages messages and emails and all that good stuff. So first, let me show you how to make this shampoo. It is so easy to make, it's really good for your hair, and it can be used for all hair types, which is probably the number one most asked question. So to start off, I am making this in a foaming soap container because the main ingredient in here is cast oil soap. And if you aren't using foaming, which you don't have to, but it will be more liquidy. So if you are making it in a foaming soap container, it will really suds up and foam really well out of here. So I just start off by putting in a fourth of a cup of cast oil soap. And then I just add in a fourth of a cup of water and this can be any type of water filtered or a just from the tap. But I will tell you that if you're using filtered water or distilled water, it will last longer. And then I'm just going to add in a fourth of a teaspoon of a carrier oil. Now on my recipe, I would use jojoba oil. That's one of my favorite ones, especially for the hair, but you could also use a fractionate coconut oil. You could use avocado oil, rose hip oil, sweet almond oil, any carrier oil will work. Now the carrier oil is also optional because that's going to be used if you have really dry or damaged hair. Now if you have more greasy hair, then you might wanna leave that oil out. It's completely up to you and your hair type. And then lastly, I'm gonna add in some essential oils and I prefer lavender, rosemary, and tea tree. Those are my three favorite essential oils for the hair. They all have really good properties for cleansing and purifying and helping with your scalp. It's also really good for dry, itchy skin. And these oils can help to stimulate hair follicles, which can help to promote hair growth, strengthen and lengthen, all of those good things. So I'm just gonna do a few drops of each of these into my shampoo. And again, this is optional. If you don't wanna add in essential oils, you don't have to. They do add a lot of benefits for the hair. And if you want to add in some other ones, that's fine too. I will link down in the description box. I have a blog post where I talk about which oils are best for your hair. And so there's more than just this, so you can switch it up if you want. Okay, so that's it, it's that simple. Now you see that I'm making a small amount of this and that's because this only is going to last for a couple weeks up to a month because of that water in here. Now if you want to extend the shelf life of your shampoo, you can add in some rosemary extract or you can keep it in the refrigerator. For me, this is enough for just a couple weeks of use for me and my husband, and so this is the perfect amount for us, and then I just remake it. As you see, it does not take very long, so it's not a big deal for me to have to remake it. 
Okay, so a question that I get really often is what can I do for my hair if it gets really tangly? So if you have really long hair or thick hair, you might notice that this mixture alone leaves your hair really tangly. And so what you can do is you can actually use, instead of water, you can use coconut milk. And that's really going to help to keep it more conditioned and make it easier to brush through after you wash it. Now, the best coconut milk to use is canned coconut milk. And I say canned because that's the only coconut milk that I could find that has just coconut milk in it. If you go to the grocery store and you're in the refrigerated section and you get like a carton of coconut milk, there's typically added things in there with, that are not good for your hair and that are not gonna help it to be untangly because there's usually sugar in there and other ingredients. So we want to use pure canned coconut milk. So if you have tangly hair, try substituting the water for coconut milk. Okay, the next question that I get is how often you should wash your hair. So this really depends on the person and your hair type. For me, I used to have to wash my hair every single day because I have really fine straight hair and it got really greasy. I'm gonna talk about my transition from regular shampoo to natural shampoo to being able to wash it way less. But I only have to wash my hair one to two times a week, kind of depending on the season or what I'm doing. Now, another question I get is, should you follow this up with a conditioner? Again, this is hair type. And so some people, yes, especially for balancing out that pH level, um, you want to use a conditioner after shampooing your hair with this, or maybe a hair mask or some type of deep conditioner treatment. Again, I have recipes for all of these things, so I'll link them below for you. But you kind of need to be the judge and see how your hair reacts. I mean, there's a lot of people that use no shampoo on their hair, and so you gotta just kind of see what works best for you. Now, another question that I get and another thing that you can do instead of using a conditioner is using a apple cider vinegar rinse. And so after you wash your hair, you can rinse it with a 50-50 like equal mixture of apple cider vinegar and water. And that's gonna help to cleanse your hair further and it's going to promote shine. Apple cider vinegar is also really good at restoring and balancing that pH level. So that's a great thing to do for your hair. Um, apple cider vinegar can be drying to your hair. So if you have really dry hair, then you might not want to do this every single wash. But again, it kind of depends on your hair type. I know that if I use it in my hair, it's okay a couple times a week. And so you can kind of go from there and just kind of decide what works best for you. Okay, so let's talk about transitioning from a just a normal conventional shampoo and conditioner from the store to an all natural shampoo. It is going to take your time, your hair, a little bit of time to adjust. So I just like to throw that out there that you're not gonna just use this the first time. Well, some people do. Some people claim that they use it the first time and it has done so much for their hair. They absolutely love it, it works great. Other people kind of struggle for about a month. I'll say it took me probably a month to get my hair used to using a natural shampoo. When I very first started using it, like I said, I was washing my hair daily. And when we wash our hair, you're wipe washing away those natural oils that your hair needs and when you wash them away your body knows to make more because you need them and so that can make your hair get over greasy and I was definitely having that issue so I had to start washing it way less when I was switched over to a natural shampoo and then like I said my hair was just greasy and it just didn't feel right it kind of felt grimy when I very first switched over and so one thing that I suggest you do is you make you up some dry shampoo. It's so easy to make. You can do it with just some cocoa powder, an air root powder. I have a recipe, I'll link it here for you. But it will help with that transition because that air root powder in there is going to absorb grease. And so 
while you're transitioning over to washing your hair less and your scalp is kind of managing those oil, the oil production, you can use dry shampoo to help with that grease and that grimy look. So I used a ton of dry shampoo when I was switching over to the more natural options. And now all I use is natural shampoo. I never buy shampoo from the store anymore. And my hair, it works really well for my hair. But I will say, that the transition probably took about a month. And so that's something just to consider and know, but obviously after you switch over, your hair is gonna be healthier and it's going to reduce toxins that you're putting into your body because regular shampoos are full of synthetics and fragrances and chemicals and things that you really don't want in your body. And as you're massaging them into your scalp, they are entering into your bloodstream. So it is definitely worth it, but it's just something to consider and know before doing the switch that it's probably going to take a little bit of time to adjust. Another question that I get a ton of is, does it lather, does it suds up? Um, the answer is yes. I mean, I'll show you here just when I get it out of the bottle. It is really sudsy and bubbly, but shampoo that you make at home or soaps or anything that you make at home is going to be a lot different than what you buy from the store. And that's because, like I was talking about before, the toxins and different chemicals and things in there. There's things in your shampoo to make it lather. There's things in your toothpaste to make it foam. And we're just used to that as consumers you get your hair clean it has to be really sudsy and lathery and your toothpaste has to be foamy and minty and your laundry has to smell a certain way but you can still have clean healthy hair without it feeling the exact same way as conventional now this does lather I will tell you that it is very sudsy it lathers in my hair but it might not feel the exact same way as your shampoo that you're using before and that's just because it's completely natural and there's no chemicals in it you're gonna notice that this shampoo is a lot thinner than a traditional shampoo. There are some ways that you can thicken it if you want it thicker, but again, it's just something that you will eventually adjust to. So if you want to thicken your all natural shampoo, you can add in a little bit of vegetable glycerin. I usually suggest starting with just a half of a teaspoon, um, trying that out, adding in a little bit more. It's a kind of gel-like texture, and it will also help your shampoo to lather and suds up a little bit more. So you can add that in if you want. You could also add in things like air root powder, baking soda, and make it more of a paste with um, your other ingredients. And again, you'll just wanna start with a little bit until the desired texture is met. Okay, so probably the main question I get is if this is for all hair types, if you can use it on color-treated hair. I personally do not have color-treated hair. I haven't had my hair colored since, I don't know, it's been probably like nine years or something. And so I am not a personal story to this, but I do have a lot of followers and subscribers and readers that do have color treated hair and say that this works fine on their hair. I do know that it's good for all hair types. Like I said, if you wanna add in some of that um, carrier oil, if you have dry hair, if you have greasy hair, you can leave it out. So you can kind of customize it to make it work for your hair type. But that base of that, either water or coconut milk and the Castell soap will work for all hair types. Now, if you have greasier hair, I would also suggest trying to add in some lemon essential oil because that oil is a natural degreaser. So putting that in is going to help. If you have really dry hair, myrrh essential oil is one of the best ones for hydrating and adding in moisture, and so you can use that oil. So again, you can customize it to make it work for all hair types. Okay, so for the sake of this video not getting way too long, I'm gonna stop there. If you have more questions about transitioning your hair to natural shampoo or going the no shampoo, shampoo option or using a conditioner or just any type of like hair care products let me know down in the comments below because I would be happy to do another video I hope this one was helpful hope you guys enjoy this shampoo recipe and again be sure to check out my description box below where I have linked just a playlist to all the different hair care products that I've shared here on my channel already and if you're new please hit that subscribe button I get out new videos every week on essential oil education share lots of different natural remedies and healthy recipes. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.